So um, welcome to a the first episode of One World, Your Story, um, after we have done our rebrand and relaunch as simply gathering, collecting, and sharing stories to people all over the world about multiple experiences and topics. And today is the 20th. Okay, you knew it. Yeah, it's Tuesday the 20th. 1020. 1020. 102020. Um, so today is October 20th, 2020. I'm Jamie, the host of One World Your Story, and I'm joined today, really excited to be joined by Chloe, who is a friend of mine who we've known each other for over 15 years now, Chloe. Yeah. Since 2005. Not for anyone Since to know. 2005. How old okay. Yeah. We are. Yeah. That's irrelevant. Um, so we met each other in high school, actually, back in boarding school. Well, I just gave yeah, you gave it away. Damn it. How old we are. Um, and for anybody that's watching, um, not just listening, yes, it is fall here in Denver, Colorado, where we are. Um, so we're wearing our fall hats. And we're here today to, and I'm going to introduce you, but we're here today to talk about a really relevant topic in what's going on um, in the world, which is we're going to be talking about abortion. We're going to be talking about Roe v. Wade. We're going to be talking about women's rights, women's rights and Chloe's journey. And so on that note, let's talk about what a glorious woman Chloe is. Um, so Chloe is about to enter a master's program for social work. Um, and in the meantime, she is working at this really awesome brewery. You might've heard of it. It's called Avery. Um, so she knows a lot about beer and she is the hostess with the mostest and probably one of the smartest people that I've ever known. Um, and I mean that really with everything really well read um, and just up to speed and really cares a lot about the world. So on that note, Chloe, is there anything else that you'd like to say about yourself and who you are um, before we really dig in here? I am woman, hear me roar. I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready. Yeah. Okay. So like I said, we're going to be talking about abortion. I um, mean, let's just get the cat out of the bag. You had an abortion, correct? Yes. Okay. How, when was that? How long ago? By the way, um, cheers. Cheers. When? Uh, in uh, 2015. 2016. Five 20... years ago? Okay. Or about six, five years yeah. ago. Okay. So that's a significant chunk of time. It actually was listening to this other podcast the other day and then someone was talking about like periods in our lives like chapters she was talking about your career and like you don't have to be so gung-ho on getting one that you're gonna have forever because you're probably gonna have like many chapters so I don't know how many chapters have gone by in five years Ooh. but <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> definitely probably something yes. different than where you Another were life five were you in Denver five years ago I was living in Boulder so still in the still in Colorado still in the area okay ironically by the way we're drinking kombucha we just cheers and this flavor is called love. Oh, I don't think that's perfect. Amazing. Right now. Um, so, okay, five years ago, you were in Boulder. I can, let me, let's go back like yeah. a bunch of steps. Just, you're going to get really into it. By the way, have you ever talked publicly about this before? I have not. Okay, so I want to acknowledge you like for how brave you are for doing that. Just mostly to my boss and I think my family and everyone else in like the close circle at yeah. the time. How does it? Okay, I was going to take a step back, but actually now that we're on this and I'm talking about it publicly in the small group of people that you mentioned that you shared it with, which sounds like all people that you're pretty close with, that you trust mm -hmm. in your inner circle. How do you feel about the fact that you did have an abortion or saying it out loud or talking about it publicly? I feel like I'm a pretty open person usually about things like that, but I have been trying to work on, you know, some Brene Brown-esque tactics of maybe not being an overshare. So I've been trying to take that into my personal practice of life, but I could probably use that too. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, meeting someone and just being like, hello, my name's Chloe and I've had an abortion. How are you today? So, um, but I feel totally ready and willing and vulnerable, especially everything that's going on in our world, politically, socially. 
Yeah. Um, I guess I asked that fine time. It's a, I don't feel that they're, I guess not so much personally, I don't feel so stigmatized by it. Okay. And I am not afraid of anyone knowing that I have taken this choice. I really appreciate that commentary. And I like love that. Stigma. I love that that's how you feel because yeah, there's so much. It's like, I feel like abortion, even uh, a miscarriage, which is totally different somewhat along the same it's like these topics within pregnancy that we just that are taboo that we don't talk about yet we really talk about and feel like we have judgment over it abortion is really different than a miscarriage I don't know why very different but I would also put that in the same sphere of feel like right now like in our culture there we are starting to see more women talking about fertility struggles and yeah. issues with that and having miscarriages and so much grief and shame and mm-hmm. hatred for our bodies and our reproductive systems. Exactly. So that is something, uh, and I'm at the age too, where a lot of my friends are trying to start families. Yeah. And there you go. Giving away the age again. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's relevant. It is relevant. Cause it we is. are at the prime age. The prime by age the way. to so I'm 32. I'm 32. By the way, <laughs> um, I'm 32. And so are you. I'm 32 and I'm not afraid of it anymore. <laughs> um, I just want my bangs back. Um, uh, but yeah, so friends of mine starting to have, fertility problems and necessarily like uh, they can't get pregnant and they want to that might be something that in some ways I do feel a little guilty about Mm. like oh oh, snap okay that's a whole other interesting topic to talk about and I didn't even think about that but holy moly Okay. Not okay. guilty, just no, it's this feeling like, wow, I'm I have this I'm gift. Fertile. And it is it is I would say it's a gift. Totally. To be a able privilege. to a privilege to to be able to bring life into this world. So you don't think about that when you're going through it. You just it's kind of a, you know, obviously self-involved in your circumstances. Well, okay, let's go but, back there. Yeah. Let's yeah. go back there because we're getting into some juicy stuff, which we'll go back and dive into, but to go way back. And if this is too personal, you don't have to answer it, no. but, um, okay. What do you, did you ever have the talk with your parents? Did they ever like have the talk with you? Uh, no, I remember watching an ep- the episode of friends with my mom. This was, I feel like the most we ever got into the talk. <laughs> and it was when Monica and Chandler first slept together and they woke up naked in that hotel room in England when Ross told Rachel or called Emily Rachel on the altar. Do you remember that? No. Yeah. Okay. Well, Monica slept with oh, Chandler. Oh yeah, 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 of course. And you know, it was scandalous because they were best <laughs> friends and friends as Mm. the show tells Mm -hmm. you and then my mom looked at me and she said something along the lines of you know there will be some people that you just want to be your friends and some people that you'll want to have sex with (laughs) okay that was weird I can't remember how old I was at that age but that was the but then I think it was relying well then did she explain what you do when you uh, there was a really bad, sorry, mom, a bad misstep, I think, in parenting, not my place to judge. But when I was really young, I have an older sibling by four years. I think I was like three or four. And I remember some sex video that was animated explaining how sex happens. And all I remember is that there were sperm with uh, top hats and like canes <laughs> tap dancing. <laughs> <laughs> that was my takeaway from that video and oh, I did it 90s. did show it was definitely you know very heteronormative sort of like mommy and daddy are going to make a baby it was odd animation and it showed yes penis into vagina okay. intercourse but in a weird way Okay, so that was that your was like, download of it. Yeah. And then that weird come. Okay. And then how old were you when you lost your virginity? 18. 18. Like technicality. Yeah. Okay. And so did you 
know about protection? Did you talk to your friends about protection? What were you doing at the time? Totally. Um, I usually had been really safe for on and off birth control. Um, Cause I'll be honest, yeah. like, first of all, I've never been on birth control. Yeah. And I'd like to say that I use condoms a hundred percent of the time, but I don't. Right. And that's the other, the other part of this. Or um, haven't, I should say in the past. I think in the particular, I'll jump right into it. Um, in the particular instance where I did get pregnant, we did start out using a condom. And then that yeah. evening. Yeah. So did you only have sex with this person one time? Actually, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, it is true, people. All it takes is <laughs> one time. <laughs> and you yeah. started using a condom. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was definitely like some, you know, bro talk, like, this isn't working, blah, blah, blah. Can I just please take this off? Oh, because it didn't feel good or wasn't Something, able to stay hard yeah, or whatever it they try on. to tell you. Yeah, to whatever they you try to, take to the tell you. Off. Don't listen to that. Don't fall for that. I'll kids. promise I'll pull out whatever right. it is. And I think I said something like, okay, but you really have to, you know, I expected the, the man as I have in the past, which you should not rely on the pull out method if you're not trying to get pregnant. And I knew this, um, but still. And okay. So then what happens? Did you, did you oh. know that night? Like when did I you... did not know because did he tell you, did you know? No, he no, no. I mean, I knew that he finished, he finished not in the way that he was supposed no, to. No, no, no. That didn't even happen. It was, I will say for technical reasons, probably uh, there was some pre-cum. Oh, so he didn't come inside you. No. Oh, um, you are just really fertile or it really yeah. can happen now. Okay. Yeah. This is actually <laughs> really good because I always, honestly, and Chloe's know me. Yeah, no, I that definitely. I literally don't think that can actually happen. No, it, it can. <laughs> Um, you are living proof of it. I mean, I'm living proof and, you know, they wow. sort of try or they can like delay. I don't know why I started doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even look. Um, yeah. I mean, he f- tried. It so was you a were, delayed reaction. So, and so you, bit. you didn't. And that I didn't think thinking like, oh shit, I might be pregnant. I didn't think, oh, I need emergency contraception. Right. Okay. So then what happens? Um, you I went your period to or a, I went home to a wedding and I noticed I was, alcohol tastes really gross. What? why we're, that's weird oh and had some spotting that was when I was supposed to get my period but it was just like light this yeah graphic um a not little bit lighter it was supposed to be it was not what it was supposed to be and then I kind of didn't really think anything of that and then when I got back to Colorado one of my girlfriends just looked at me and said something along the lines of yo your boobs are huge and the, like a lot bigger I have large breasts but it was, snap that is a significant yeah and they felt tender and then I took a pregnancy test heads up you don't need to buy expensive tests like go to the dollar store get the dollar store pregnancy test they work just fine and it will show up right away if you are <gasps> pregnant <laughs> so what happened in that moment you get the test did you kind of already know before you got the test? Yeah. And the first question that they ask is, do you, when you go to the doctor, like I called my guy. So after, okay. So, mm-hmm. but before you even went to the guy now and you yeah. peed on the stick, right. Mm-hmm. And it was confirmed. They say, yeah. What did you think in that moment? Do you remember? Like, oh, Oh, F word. Oh, fuck. Yeah, you can say it. It's okay. (laughs) (laughs) I talked to Chloe before we started this, and I was like, I'm really trying to not use any swears. Like, when, but in this situation, what else do you say? 
Right? You look down at you, oh, fuck, shit. That's so- Honestly, I think I thought, I'm single. I work at a brewery. I This was like a one-time person. Oh, my well, gosh. Okay, like, so this is whole- you, you going back to yeah. in the beginning when we started this saying it was all about my thinking of your own stuff. Reasons and, or, yeah, my own, like, this isn't a person. Oh, my God. I don't think, like. So you immediately were like, I can't have a baby. I kind of, and this is something that I also want to touch on that of my privilege as a white woman of economic means, I did know that I had safe and legal and affordable within my range access to an abortion provider. In Colorado. In Colorado. And so that wasn't something I was thinking about in the moment. I just was, you know, I ha- I'm getting an abortion. Had you ever thought, and I asked this kind of thinking, and I know the answer, but like, I don't know how many times I've had conversations with girlfriends or like even partners that I've dated, which I've dated men and women, but thinking like, if I were to get pregnant, would I get an abortion? Would I not? Like I've talked to people about this and I'm always like, yeah, I think I would because I'm not in a place that I could do that. Although now at the age that I'm at, that's yeah. it kind of changes where I'm like, ah, maybe I wouldn't because I kind of, I, I don't know. Five years ago, that's a very different story. Well, I think- so, had you thought about that before? Yeah. Um, and I will tell you why. Uh, I think two years or a year and a half prior to this, I did get um, genetic testing done and found out that I am BRCA2 positive for the well, that's that Jewish variant thing. thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I say it like that. <laughs> for anybody that's listening, I am 100% so, yeah. Jewish. I know about Ashkenazi this. Ashkenazi Jewish women. Chloe um, is as well. I, that I is have terrible of me to say it. Like no, no, that, no, no. But. It's not necessary. Yeah, it's uh, not you know applicable to Jews only. But I was a part of a study at Memorial Sloan Kettering, which treated my maternal grandmother aunt and my mother for breast and ovarian cancer and my mom was really insistent that I go there and it was free for them because they were tracking the history of uh, breast and ovarian cancer in specifically Ashkenazi Jewish women Mm -hmm. and so I did that and I got the results back and it was yes I have an 87 percent chance of getting breast cancer and a 50 percent chance of ovarian cancer whoa so that's high Chloe yes so they do recommend getting preventative double mastectomy and hysterectomy um ASAP and they you know it's kind of like a are you gonna have a baby and get get that out like so that kind of played a big oh. that was something I had in the back of my head like what if this is my only chance almost to mm. have a kid um I gotta get my organs taken out and then maybe I won't have that ability Okay, you're bringing up so many layers of things to talk about. By the way, Chloe was, before we started, she's like, these episodes are an hour. I'm not going to have anything to talk about. Yeah, right. I mean, that's a whole other thing, right? It's like, yeah. Well, um, they, like, one of the nurses, so while I was you still getting, have yeah, I still, everything. I haven't done it yet. I do get, um, yeah, preventative. It's really important to stay on this. And it technically is a pre-existing um, condition. So I do, and I have really dense breast tissue. I have to get, um, alternate MRIs and, um, mammograms, tomographic mammograms. So alternate every six months and that shit's expensive. I was so going to say, yeah. talk about privilege so, and access to health Exactly. Exactly. So that technically is a pre-existing condition and yeah, I want to stay on top of that. I really like my breasts. I would like to keep them as long as possible, but also I'm not going to jeopardize, you know, my body. So 
kind of been like, okay, by like 35, I probably got it. Is it jeopardizing your body though? Or is it jeopardizing them to keep it? My God, there's so many layers. It is. I mean, 87% is like a pretty high. It's really high. That's over 50. I mean, that's That's really high. It's close to a hundred. We can like round that up. And that feels, you said that and I was like, oh. Yeah. So that feels high. So then one of the nurses asked me about it. She's like, geez, this was this decision harder because you have like the BRCA gene. Oh I was like, God. oh my God, lady, no, just do it. Well, it's so interesting. And you think about what it means to be a woman, right? And That's, like, yeah, when I'm like, boobs oh, are shoot. such a part of it. The ability to have a baby is the such a part a, of it. And our baby. ovaries, like, and to think that you just have to kind of get rid of them right will you be able to get pregnant we're 32 it's weird times that we're living in like and yet I would beg to argue that you would probably still say absolutely we need pro-choice um a hundred and a bajillion percent do you regret the decision that you made not at all not in any way so let's go back and talk about that so you find out you're pregnant you go oh shit you start thinking all of these things i'm not gonna i can't have this baby obviously well actually i, I don't know because well, you kind of yeah, went back and forth i mean i had maybe you know I'm, i don't know what it's like for everyone but i'm would bet that a lot of people you know play out the what ifs yeah of course on both ends did you um yeah but it was kind of more immediate like this guy isn't necessarily like a like you know a bad person not a bad guy but I know probably not the best guy um I don't really know this person that well but oh my gosh I have I could have I have something that's 50 percent there oh my god you now you're did you talk to him about it yeah um and this Ooh, yeah, it was, they were not easy conversations um, to be had. Was there, was it a conversation or was it? No, I, I'm pregnant and this I'm is my doing, decision. Yes. And I didn't give that person any say in it. it I was like, I'm pregnant. I'm getting an abortion. Um, thought you should know, like, you know, you never should send a text message that says like, Hey, we need to talk. So I didn't, I tried to be like, Hey, like we should grab a a drink, even though alcohol tastes in fucking gross. Um, I was like, we should grab a drink or something. And sort of like, didn't really hear much of a response. It was like, Hey, I like, would love to see you blah, 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 blah. Finally. All right. You know what? F this and sent a like long, strongly worded text message, something along the lines of, hey, um, remember that night like a month ago when we hooked up and you took the condom off and tried to pull out? Well, uh, guess what? I'm pregnant. I'm having an abortion. I don't need anything from you, uh, but... I thought you should know so this doesn't happen to they hate that men hate that yeah I thought you should know so you don't like treat another woman like this well you're bringing up an interesting <laughs> an interesting thing that I haven't really thought about until now which like by the way like the male perspective yeah yeah the male perspective because when I think about abortion I really do think it's a woman's body you can't tell me what to do yeah what, but it, what it about is the guy? also the gut that that is something that they yes I do kind of I mean, not regret that in my circumstances, I think there's so many different situations, you know, in which conception can occur. Um, But in my situation, this wasn't, we were not in a relationship. We had barely known each other. Yeah, it was- You felt like you had the right to just make that decision. Yeah, I, I did. I think that's pretty entitled now that I'm hearing that I'm talking about. I know, <laughs> as I'm saying it out loud. Damn. Because like regularly, I mean, I haven't thought about that. But yeah, no, why should it be? I mean, in this situation, I was like, this guy doesn't 
care about me. I don't even know if I should tell them this. Um, and yeah, I mean, I did. And then I sent that text and then like immediately oh, yeah. got a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> did he want it? Like, was he? No. no. I mean, so he would have done the same thing. Yeah. We met up a couple of times and he did, you know, was like, tried to be, I don't know, supportive is the right word. I mean, he gave me money, like money for it. I was going to yeah. ask. He, okay. Where'd you get the up. abortion? How'd you do it? I went to the Boulder Valley Women's Clinic, um, where I had been going as like my regular OBGYN. Okay. So um, I ask, was it hard to find a place? No. So you had been going there? No. Also, yeah, I know like Planned Parenthood. I had, there were, there were, I, yes, again, like of my yeah, my privilege. I was able and resources. I have the equity and access to these resources, which well, you were living big, in Boulder, Colorado. Yes, it's I like was living in Boulder. The definition of, of privilege. Yuppie. Yeah. Um, I and like so it. I had access to really great, safe. Although and I love Boulder, it was pretty. Wow, but, but yeah. it's it is Boulder Valley Women's Clinic. You're amazing. Um, but it's super liberal. It is, it's like a Cadillac liberal place. Everyone, I think the majority of the people that live there are kind of shielded from any kind of real connection to struggles that affect a lot of oh, sure. that sort of like, like yeah, we don't sh- even well, know. You're opening up. Like, yeah, let's different. Not go so down I'm getting that. I'm getting let's sidetracked. Go okay. So okay. So you yeah, I to- made an appointment and then I went and they give you a pregnancy test. But before they like give you go through these questions, it's just like, do you feel pregnant? And then I was like, mm, yeah. I do you totally just know and you can feel pregnant it's the weirdest feeling ever but I felt like 100% like if I didn't need I didn't need a test or anything it's like my body telling me yes you're pregnant okay so that's weird and then they go through all the questions and other stuff and like did you just protect it but like yes no um <laughs> yes but no. no I my intentions were good but I failed um and then it's like this is how far then they do an ultrasound and tell you how far along you are how far along are I you? was only like five and a half weeks five or six which is why I was able to pinpoint it to this specific encounter <laughs> totally totally yeah it's like oh what was they doing the weekend of the, the 15th who yeah. were you yeah. doing yeah not what were you yeah. doing <laughs> yes but you know yeah single lady give it up so um, did you go alone by the way so one of my really good friends came with me and then this was what was sad kind of like left and was like I'm gonna run in there and I'll be back and it was the last person of the day to get my abortion or my like timeline so you kind of go into this, this waiting room they give you cervix softener and some other medicine maybe and you just sit there like starting to cramp up but I saw all of these other girls like go I was literally like the last appointment of the day and I had to get there at like 10 a.m or 10 or 11 a.m and I left at like 6 30 6 45 it was like the last patient in the building and Something I noticed, aside from like one other woman that was in there who had, was younger and uh, looked like what was their mother taking them and there with them. Every other woman had a uh, male partner with them there. Really? Yeah. Which I found really interesting and then also sad and it, I felt a little bit of self-pity. And sure. Yeah. It was a, like a little bit of like, oh my God, why did like... I'm a loser and I don't have a boyfriend. Definitely. I know. Not. I I'm know. No, 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 no. I, I know. Think, I would have thought it was the opposite. Right, right. I know all of these things now, but that was kind of At like where my head was. I'm just like, wow, these girls are so lucky. They have like loving significant others. 
Um, maybe. Maybe. Well, well maybe, maybe it was we're... just the guy from the one night stand that was there for support. No, I don't think so. Though. I mean, hey, but we <laughs> never know. Yeah, we never right? we exactly. can tell ourselves we can, whatever like, we want. Or some type of friendship. Yeah. Anyway, I so, did feel kind of lonely there. And I, mostly because I was like the last one. Sure. I mean, I'm sure there were so many things. And I like, did sign up. Yeah, paid the extra $50 to have the IV um pain meds which if you do have access and affordability to do that get it um I had seen a really close girlfriend many many years before in college take um the abortion pill and I decided I did not not want to like bleed slowly in a bathtub for 12 hours in pain. Oh, so Chloe, geez. Talk about getting graphic. I mean, <laughs> okay. Like That's... how, okay. Let's go back to, to you real quick. Like how, so you get the abortion, you go home. Like, how did you feel afterwards? Did you talk about it? Really you... sad for a long time. Like actually, long? like probably like a good, like two, three months. I got really depressed. Um, I don't know that. If that there is some, you know, hormonal effects of that, but also I think it was a lot of shame and self-pity and self-loathing and then just kind <coughs> of feeling, yeah, like, <coughs> bless you. Me. Yeah, but it's like a shame spiral. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling sorry for myself and then being like, what have I done? Did you ever feel like you took a life? No. Um, but it is something I still think about now. And this is horrible to say, but in like, you know, the COVID and quarantine, sometimes I just think, wow, like, thank goodness I don't have a five year old. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, I think it's a scary time to have a kid. Uh, which is, yes, I know that that's. And for, or not matter. like, yeah. like for or not yes or if just had a kid like it's really beautiful and they're really of beautiful of course and you get to spend time yes yes yeah, I know what you mean yeah I, and then be like well why so, could be like so it was more of the shame and self-pity and just like whoa I, I think you do definitely like hormonal sadness yeah which honestly hasn't been until recently in life that I've really experienced that when I get my period, but it is hormones. I mean, they mess with you. Like it's they a real are thing. Freaking real. Um, when I did have an abortion, I let them like talk me into this birth control implant that isn't really great for me. It wasn't great. I got a uh, next one, which is like the arm one. And that did make me feel kind of crazy. Um, a little bit just like highs and lows and ups and downs and I like figured that out a little bit later it's like get this one out yeah no um, good that no one bueno. doesn't work for me you go through a lot of measures to try to not get pregnant I mean right and then I think yeah I told myself that you know I definitely don't want to experience this again I don't take it lightly um the gravity of it not by any means. Yeah, did your so, behavior change afterwards? Oh yeah. I mean, uh in terms of like sexual health and safety. Yeah. Um yeah, I wouldn't probably yeah, I haven't been like, no, have sex with me without a condom. So you if have you're not, not a primary so you have not partner, had unprotected no, sex. No, I have, but with you know, like a primary partner, um, and doing safe testing, I've been a I want to say much more adult. Well, you say with a primary partner, but you're not necessarily on birth control. I am. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So oh, yeah, yeah, much safer. Okay, yes. got it. Yeah, be and, like I will not be on not birth control again. Okay, got gotcha. you. Um, and that does also it affects kind you. of affect me in the given like my genetic history and my age. And you know, do you want to have kids, Chloe? I am on the fence. I'm not completely sold. Um, but it does as like, you know, 
the older you get and the more it's in your face and society talking about it and it's in some cases considered, you know, a geriatric pregnancy after the age of 35. I'm like, that's kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy, but, but I mean, hey, they say that, that 40 is the new 30 and their bodies are lasting longer. So I think that my stuff. body, I kind of have like this bad sneaking, not bad, wow, um, a sneaking suspicion. You know, my mother had me really late, technically late. But who's to say? Yeah, you know, You're, our path is our path. Yeah, so Which, I could totally see myself, yeah, being like forty and grounded and ready in a new career. Girl, and, you and me both, and the world hopefully in a different spot by well, now. I Which, hope, yeah, maybe I can wake up in March and everything will <laughs> be on the path to rightness. Golly, right? well, let's talk about yes. life currently and Amy Conley Barrett and. And the possibility that, you know, Roe v. Wade could be overturned and everyone's talking about going to stock up on birth control. I mean, what would you say to her? In my mind, it's like, I just can't understand men. I don't know. I'm like, yeah, if, if, if you weren't born with the organs and don't necessarily get it in the same way, like I can kind of wrap my brain around the, the pro-life thing. But as a woman, I think I it just does can't have wrap my brain around it. With, what would you say to someone? It 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 is a religious thing for a lot of people, and specifically for her. Um, it's but what about okay? So you don't have an abortion, but, you, but, you but you then these are the same people that you know forced hysterectomies upon women in ICE detention facilities. So that is something I'm like is that like can you really do that you know be like all life matters and then force sterilize women of so a certain just nature. for the context so of this conversation have, there's yeah. a lot of hypocrisy in religion and oh, in like, different yeah. policies and you say this but you do that so just for the context of this conversation sure. let's stick, stick to, it to um yes her as topic. a woman but I, like yeah what do you say or to anybody you're like that is pro-life and you are somebody that had an abortion that by the way says that they would do it again and you think it was probably the right decision for you at that time what would you say to somebody now I mean imagine if you couldn't do that that's basically what's trying that's what's happening but, yeah um I would do everything in my power to make sure that like would you go could, drive to a state where, oh yeah and help take women to get safe abortions like women used to die by trying to give themselves or others abortions and like I just feel like like okay what's surgeries what's worse exactly having an abortion or bringing a life into the world that is by the way overpopulated already and maybe even giving it up for adoption because you didn't want to I do think that that is something that you know is completely unfair of someone else to judge anyone's fitness to be a parent so that you know for me was very personal like I personally didn't feel like but I how many people place. don't have an abortion and then give their kid up for adoption? That's what I'm saying. What's worse? I think the the that adoption rates are actually at a, a low. Um, people are having children and and keeping them. But yeah, what's worse? Not I I I don't know. I think those like the crazy church people be like we will take care of God's babies, but they're not taken care of. Yeah, I don't agree with that so I guess I don't agree with any of her foo her shenanigans keep abortion safe keep abortion legal do you work um, you- I wish that there were more measures to you know be great if health insurance I know in some cases Medicaid uh, Medicare can pay for it but it's rare and not in every state yeah, I mean, geez, health you have to sh- jump through a lot of hoops to get an abortion, financial assistance with an abortion. Yeah, it's not easy and like federally non-existent. So it, I feel like it should be something that's free. 
Along with the rest that of our healthcare, long, yeah. I mean, like my that's God. a long, a long way to Yeah, we gotta go. get a lot of other things. Get a lot of as much as I love. Yeah, I that, mean, but like but that's yeah, not the issue that's at, at under attack, which is the reversal of Roe v. Wade. No, it's but like, I'm like really hoping that you know it doesn't happen that we pack the courts. No, I think that as a 32 year old woman. Never did I think that I would be at this point in my life and that those rights would be taken away. I, yeah. I um, will sit here and own the fact that like, I just took that privilege for granted completely and didn't realize how recently it was. Like when my mom was my age or a little bit before, yeah. like when she was born, this wasn't possible, right? But when I was born, well, I just took it for granted. And now I'm sitting here like, oh my God. I mean, did you ever think that this would be this, up on the ticket for reversal? No. When I was like a teenager, did I think that it, when I was in my 30s, we'd be talking about taking away abortion? No, that never even, I took that, yeah, completely for granted. Yeah, what do you think about that? Like, how does oh, that make you feel? Does it make it you question anything else? All of, I've been questioning everything since November 9th, 2016. Uh, when Donald Trump got elected, I had like the worst panic attack of my life. Probably maybe I watched the Hunger Games recently <laughs> and maybe ate an edible and freaked out. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is going to be the end and of I civilization. Bet, bet money that you're not alone in any of this. Well, I still think I'm like, this is what did happen. Holy sh- shenanigans. This is, yeah, the end of, you know, the, the free Lottie Dottie life as I knew it and we had it so I mean it was so ridiculous how ridiculously well America featured and living abroad places and everyone looks at you um kind of in higher regard it's ridiculous and other countries have so much of this awful awful stuff happening so in some ways it's well finally time for the the fall of what is known as the great empire wow (laughs) we're gonna take it on a deep dark (laughs) we just have to acknowledge the date that it's october 20th this election is coming up we're three weeks away and i mean that's why we're talking about this it's like because on our ballot we do have i don't know what proposition number it is it is in colorado to take away abortion after 22 weeks which is worth noting that so many states don't have this at all you're right i kind of feel like coloradans have already established that yeah we are okay with abortion there's only i believe it's one clinic in the state one doctor in the state that will perform the perform these because the late 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 one late abortion now I mean, I think that we're lucky that we're, that is the conversation that we're right. having in this state. I wish it wasn't a conversation, I know. period. I want to say, like, just because we have to wrap it up and I'll let you say anything that you want about this, but just because, and correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm putting words in your mouth and elaborate on this, if you will, but I assume this because I think you and I are pretty like-minded. Yes, I am pro-choice not an easy choice, not condu- not encouraging it. Right. And I think that we should have that option. Are you of the same page? Because I think that like people, like one of the arguments is that, well, that shouldn't be like a form of birth control or blah, 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 blah. I, I'm saying right. that because it doesn't sound, yes, it was an easy decision in that you knew I can't have this child, but I don't think it was an easy decision to act like it's not easy to go do it it's not like you said you're three months really like in a depressed state afterwards nothing is easy about it even though you knew that was the decision you needed to make yes it's not something to take lightly I don't think yes there are there are cases where you know maybe a woman will have multiple procedures done as a form of contraception and I don't think that's anything like who cares and it's not great but it's not 
that's their choice. It should be our choice. And then we have so many great organizations in place that do try to help like Planned Parenthood or make access to birth control and information available, readily available and resources. Well, I think so that like- Gotta keep support for them alive. Oh my God, the, the funding for Planned Parenthood and taking, oh my God, yeah, that's sorry. a whole other conversation, yeah, sorry. which is- Heart wrenching. Wow, we did but, have a, I did have yeah. an hour worth of stuff to yeah, talk we're about. We're not finished. Um, we're almost finished. We're not finished. So I really appreciate and value the point that you just made about let's say the the woman, I'm gonna call her Francesca, who's had Hi, Francesca. five to ten abortions. <laughs> I don't know, that's what came into my mind. So what? And what? I love that you said that because at the end of the day, I think what it all comes down to this whole conversation is who am I to tell you what to do with your life? And also who or are to you to it? tell someone what hormones like birth control? Sure. Or what, is, what is yeah. right or wrong? I love the saying, don't shit on me. Don't shit on someone. And it's true. I, there's no yeah. should or shouldn't do what feels right in you unless you're harming somebody else. And that's where it gets really tricky. And there's the fine line of defining with what, this conversation. What, yeah exactly like no what's when does it actually become become life I don't know I I go back so that's where it gets fishy but I do think that at the end of the day it's an unborn it's an unborn fetus until the to, to me yes it is you are growing something I don't know there's the whole body. heartbeat yes. conversation the heartbeat thing is like pretty messed up I don't know there's so yeah. many layers to that I don't want to go down that right I don't want to go down that <laughs> because I don't know all I know is that yeah we should, should have be, the, it should be a choice, choice. where that uh, line is I don't know um again I think that we should have the choice um but the point that you said is and what We shouldn't be judging people, like let people live their lives. And I think that goes so relevant to the political environment. Why does this crazy lady care what I do with my body? Well, just think about how much judgment, right? When I say to Donald Trump, do you or do you not condone white supremacy? It's all about judging people. And we're having this Black Lives Matter and the largest civil rights movement in history. It's so much more than just about judging people, but on the surface, that's all that we're sitting here doing. And I just think, love, by the way, did you like the taste I of this kombucha? It. It's, it's really good. Gotta love each other a little bit more. Love ourselves. Maybe yeah. if you we loved ourselves a little bit more in that moment when the guy's like, it doesn't feel good, you'd be like, no, I don't care. You know, yeah. like to bring it all back full circle. It's true. Yes. Like we let ourselves go in those moments and judge ourselves a thousand times. So anyway, I'm ending my rant. Ending so that, yeah. But is there anything else that you want to say about the conversation regarding what is life? Abortion in general, your experience and journey with it that you would love for anybody that's listening to gain or glean from what you went through that maybe is on the fence about how they feel about it or doesn't know how to talk about it with somebody else or has had an abortion themselves and doesn't know how to share them their own story or reconcile their feelings I know they threw a lot at you but I think it totally yeah it should be your choice and it depends on so many factors your situation how do you feel about doing this are you going to be alone on this journey can you conquer that um what what are your situations and like what are your religious views and a lot of people don't want to do that or it's against their religion or fully want are in a place with like loving and willing families and partners to accept life it just should be a choice and up to well from your own whole like it should be I think from my own point of view I didn't give that other person a choice um I'm sure there are lots of you know I guess yeah it is men um like <laughs> who yeah um who feel that they aren't given a choice in the matter sure. and that is a conversation you 
that it takes two to tango and you should have a lot of hard conversations. Yeah, I mean, that's something that none yeah. about, nothing about this is easy. It doesn't mean it's not possible. Just because it's a hard conversation doesn't mean you right. can't have the conversation. Being like, oh my God, I never want to tell any, but yeah. Um, to anyone that's listening that is like, no, pro-life period, what would you say to them? You know, got to walk a mile in someone else's shoes and maybe you should be more open. It's not your body. And do you, you stand firm in that this was the best decision for the path of your life? Yes. hundred percent. I mean, now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, no, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I mean, I would so. say, yeah, so like, you're sitting here being like, wow, what you're I saying did, I'm like, not even sold on having kids today. Yeah, like, like maybe come on. I would still get it together. I don't know in this way or I would have, yeah, it's, harder to say because also I do think that would light a fire under your I don't know I know a lot of people who have also really pulled it together after entering motherhood anyway we don't have time for all that but I say but how many be a choice. how many choices in life do we not know is this even getting married you never know is this necessarily right or wrong but you kind of know in your own gut you yourself know for your own life in your gut it tells if you. there is doubt of a son i don't know who said this something like a family member always has said to me and i'm sure it's like a famous quote but it's not and i always hear it said like this if there is doubt there is no doubt and then kind of you know I don't get that. If there's doubt, there's no doubt. If you have doubt, you're like, it's about listening to your gut and your right. soul. Right. Um, like if you have feelings a certain way, you need to trust that. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Or I've heard if, if it's not an F if yes, so if get... it's not a heck yes, then don't do it. Cause if you're well, on the fence, I mean, I don't know about sit on one. it for a second. Yeah. Or if it's a no, but and there's plenty of women. Yeah, I'm not saying everybody get abortions at all. No, it's it doesn't definitely, sound like that's what you're okay. saying. Yeah. No, it sounds it like you're saying be, if your yeah, decision, my and decision. you're gonna know in your gut what it is. Yeah. So okay, and the oh, last thing oh. I have to say, and then Chloe, I'll pass it back to you again, give you a second last opportunity. Oh, man, vote. Like if you're listening to this conversation, this stuff is so relevant. Elections are. Now happening yeah, underway. You can literally vote now. People are coming out in unprecedented. Make it numbers. happen. You have an opinion one way or another. Um, yeah, and if you don't vote, just, you don't get to complain about it. Vote. Just vote. Just vote. If you can, do it. I know there's some people that can't. It is a privilege. It is a- um, so vote if you can, and it is a privilege. Don't forget that, Chloe. Anything else you want to wrap up on? no okay vote um thank you again for being so willing to share your story (laughs) and talk about all of this it that takes something um and i really really appreciate it for Um, sure and it was really eye-opening and thank you so much thanks for having me on here yeah anytime my pleasure okay (laughs) have a great one everyone thank you so much for listening to this episode of the one world your story podcast If you enjoyed hearing this story and you wish to hear more, make sure you subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube. And of course, follow us on Instagram at One World Your Story. From all of us here at the One World Your Story podcast, we are sending you so much joy and love. Have a wonderful rest of your day.